Right, this one's been a long time coming, and I can only apologise to everyone. Now, if you remember, about five months ago, I fitted those Enfield Precision pipes from Hitchcock's motorcycles to the interceptor. And as I always do, the plan was to do a video on fitting the pipes and sort of showing them off, and then do a separate video on the sound check for the pipes. But then winter appeared, the weather closed in, and the pandemic started to surge again here in the UK, and we were hit with a full lockdown and a stay-at-home mandate. This was briefly relaxed over Christmas, and then we went straight into a full lockdown again in January for what I think has been the longest continuous lockdown so far, which obviously put the kibosh on my plans to do the soundcheck video at that time. The whole point of a stay-at-home mandate is that you're supposed to stay at home. So, as you know, I stayed at home and did what I could to keep this channel running from home. Now, I've had hundreds of comments in the interim asking you know if people have missed this soundcheck video where is it did i do it when am i going to do it and you know i have got a little bit tired of trying to explain to people the reason why it's been delayed and i know everybody has different views on you know the lockdowns and whether we should comply or not which opens up a whole new can of worms. Now, I took the decision that I was going to comply strictly with the lockdown regulations. It's the only way we're going to get out of this pandemic. And I have absolutely no regrets for taking that decision. Now, if you want to express your opinion and lecture me and everybody else how this pandemic is all just a big conspiracy and ignoring the lockdown rules doesn't do any harm, please feel free to do so in the comments section of someone else's channel, because I'm not the slightest bit interested. So, let's get on with the review of these pipes. I gleaned from the original video that I made that these pipes are not everyone's cup of tea. Some people like them, some people don't like them, but that's the beauty of customising motorcycles and the custom industry. There's something there for everyone, and these pipes are just one example of what's available. And let's face it, if we all liked exactly the same thing, customising your bike wouldn't be much fun, would it? Of course, the beauty of choosing parts from Hitchcock's, especially for the Royal Enfields, is that they have a very long and rich history in the motorcycle industry. They're a name you can trust. I'm going to cover the sound that these pipes make, both with the baffles in and with them out towards the end of the video, but of course the first thing people are going to want to know is how does it affect the bike, how does it affect performance? Well actually there are one or two positive benefits of fitting these pipes. I've covered about 150 miles on this bike since fitting these pipes with both the baffles in and the baffles out. Now, with the baffles out, there is a very positive increase in mid-range power. It is very noticeable. Now, I did notice, as you might expect, that this starts to trail off at about 5,500 revs. Performance pipes are always a compromise. They're a balance. And generally, any performance pipe will sort of gain that mid-range power at the expense of top-end performance. Now, I can't confirm or deny that that is the case with these pipes, because I value my license too much to test the bike to its terminal velocity. But I do suspect that that is probably the case. But that's okay, because if we ride our bikes at full speed all the time, one of two things happen. We kill ourselves, or we lose our licenses. What is important is that these pipes give the bike more punch in the mid-range, at those speeds where you need that power for overtaking. It provides the rider with more power in reserve. And it bolsters confidence and safety where I believe it's needed the most. Now, the baffles are a fairly standard design for this sort of pipe. They're made from stainless steel, and I have to admit, they can be a little bit fiddly to fit. 
Although, having said that, they're not something you're going to be putting in and taking out on a regular basis. I suspect most people will just fit them and leave them there. Now, fitting them has quite a predictable effect. It does quieten the pipes down somewhat, and I will try to demonstrate this with some footage at the end of the video. But it also does deprive you of a little bit of that power gain mid-range. It's not a huge loss of that extra power, but it is noticeable. It is there, and it's, to be honest, to be expected. But fair's fair, what will probably happen is that it will give you back a little bit of that top-end power again. In my opinion, it only takes the edge off that additional power, and it does still give a very worthwhile power gain over the OEM pipes. I don't see it as a negative. Now, I'll try to preempt a regular question whenever I make uh, sort of aftermarket exhaust reviews is about fuel consumption and whether fitting pipes will affect it. Now, people often report that the bike uses more fuel after they've fitted the pipes. I don't think that's got anything to do with the pipes. I think it's more down to the fact that people tend to get a bit more enthusiastic with acceleration because they like the sound after they've fitted these sort of pipes. And of course, that is what affects the fuel consumption, not the pipes. But the other very positive benefit that I've noticed with these pipes is the cooler running of the engine. The OEM pipes get very hot in a very short space of time, which is an indication, of course, that the whole power unit is holding heat, which is never good for an air-cooled bike. I've noticed that even after 35, 40 miles, you can still put your hand on these pipes, and it's just like a warm radiator. So they are allowing a lot more heat to escape from the engine than the standard pipes do due to the more efficient gas flow which can only be a good thing now please bear in mind i do have a dna filter stage one kit fitted to this bike which is going to assist with those performance gains if you have a standard air filter setup it may not be as noticeable as it was for me Okay, I suppose we'd best get on with the sound checks then. Please bear in mind that camera audio cannot always be trusted. It does not give a true rendition of what the human ear hears at the time, at that location. I picked the best day possible for doing this sound check while the wind levels were low, but wind is, I'm afraid, a fact of life when you're making these sort of videos. There's nothing I can do about it. I did take the decision not to try and clean the audio up. I've left it exactly as it came out of the camera. So here we go first, an external flyby followed by an action cam sequence giving a rider's perspective of the sound. Starting first off with the baffles in. Here we go.
Right, so that was with the baffles in. Now for exactly the same sequence, but this time with the baffles out. So there you have it. In both cases, you've got a very typically British twin sound. Without the baffles, it is very snappy and snarly, with the baffled version being just a little bit more, shall we say, civilised, but still capturing that loud, classic British twin sound. In both cases, there is no popping on the overrun. That's the next question everyone's going to ask me. I shall leave it for you to decide which of the two is best for you and whether these pipes are for you. In any event, I will leave a link to them on Hitchcock's website in the video description down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. As always, please, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It means such a lot to me when you do. I will of course be back next week, so until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.